Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Japan Challenge Live Tear Sheet Review and Winner's Announcement. Today's speaker is Dr. Thomas Wicke. Thomas uh, is the VP of Data Science at Quantopian. He did his PhD at Brown University building computational models of the brain. He is the co-author of the popular probabilistic programming package, PyMC3. There's a link to the challenges forum post in the description of the webinar where you can ask remaining questions from the members of the community and Thomas. Thank you so much. With that, let's get started. All right, thank you everybody for joining today's webinar. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited about this challenge. Really, the challenges in general have been um, a real surprise hit for us. Uh, and we are basically at a stage now where we're just trying to experiment around a little, see which directions uh, we can push this into, see what we get. Um, as, so, so this is the best way to think about this, that we're like with you guys together, uh, trying to figure out how, um, how, whether this has wheels and, and where those can take us. And certainly the Japan one was a bit of a curveball uh, that we, through out there, mainly because, well, it's the first one that we've done in international markets. And Japan is really quite an interesting market from many perspectives. One of them is that it is very diversifying. So if you run a US equities portfolio and you want to diversify it, well, Japan is a very well-developed market. So there's a lot of liquidity. Um, but at the same time, it also just operates in often completely different ways. So there might be different things that work there that are not working in the US, but also just the overall structure of the market is uh, just quite different enough so that it's pro that is very diversifying. So those are just some of the motivations for us to do that, uh, but also certainly just because uh, I think the, the fact that the platform now has this international support is a bit underappreciated. So, we wanted to basically open that up to um, these other things that you can do on the platform, just get more experience that way too. The other challenge here uh, for us actually was that while the Japan equities and many other equities are supported in the research notebook environment, they're not supported in the backtest. So that is why here we had to do things a little bit differently where you had to just write your own factor and then uh, run the test sheet based on that and then remove that factor. So the factor would live in the notebook um, where usually we have a back test, but it seems like no one had a problem with that. And we're very excited that this worked out in the way it did. And we're also very excited that we got uh, five, 59 submissions in total. So um, we were really excited about each one of those. And there were 20, uh, all those submissions were done by 21 people in total. And uh, what we really are always excited to see is how international our community is, and that is represented by the uh, internationality of the people who are submitted to the challenge. Uh, so there's over all 12 countries being represented and eight first-time challenges. So welcome everyone who uh, submitted for the first time, and also especially uh, a warm welcome to uh, the members from the Tokyo Quantopian user group uh, who I met while I was in Japan, uh, who are doing some, some great work and who submitted to this challenge as well. So we're very excited to also get uh, factors submitted uh, from, from Japan for Japanese factors. So usually what I do in these reviews is I just start with explaining a bit what we're looking for and how to read these notebooks and then what I'm looking for when grading these. If you tuned into the previous um, Tereshi challenge for the uh, guidance data set, then that was uh, definitely me just getting more sophisticated in terms of like automating the selection process. Now here, I couldn't do this here uh, because as I mentioned before, the factor lives in the notebook. Um, we don't currently have the technical capabilities to run those factors that are just living in a notebook. The only thing that we can run and analyze ourselves are back tests. So here, the only thing I can go off of is the tear sheet that you guys submitted here. So I don't have a way of like running this and checking for correlations or anything like that. So here we will just basically go back to the beginning and just purely evaluate it that, um, purely evaluate it in terms of what this looks like here. So we will go through that. Okay, so um, now let me start by just 
going over what we're looking for and what these different plots mean that uh, challenges are submitting. And this is a notebook uh, submitted by Joachim. And it looks pretty much picture perfect, so that's why I'm choosing this. The main thing that you want to look at is this plot in the upper left corner where you get the IR or the specific shop ratio, actually in this case, because we don't have a risk model for Japan, so these are just the total returns, so there's no specific. So this is really just the shop ratio um, of uh, the first day signal. So here you can see it has an almost shop, a shop ratio of three, and that is linked with the cumulative returns over here. So this right side plot shows the uh, cumulative returns. So uh, basically this blue line at the top represents uh, the cumulative returns of uh, that yield a shop ratio of 2.9 or whatever that is. And then the other very important thing is, well, maybe once that once we trade into that portfolio, right, that is specified on uh, day T, maybe we don't trade into that immediately, right? So due to turnover constraints or some other things, uh, the portfolio, uh, the final portfolio, might not be the exact portfolio that is specified by the factor by the algorithm. So usually what happens then is that there will be some tracking error or delay in the portfolio that we're targeting. So what is very important then, if there is a delay, we want to know, well, what happens if we, for example, trade into this five um, days later, right? Um, and for some factors, if they move really, really fast, that alpha might have like completely evaporated or maybe even turned against us. So that would be something that we couldn't trade if we knew that we would incur such a delay and we would have to trade it much, much faster than uh, maybe we're able with the execution engine that we have. So that is why this plot is important for looking not just at the first day, but also subsequent days. And that is sort of the message that we've been trying to hammer home. Here you can see the same just for this, but as you can see, like there is some decay over time and you always expect that. Um, and but this is actually totally fine. So you can see even after 14 days, the shop ratio is still fairly high. So that is that is a really cool thing. That looks great. And then the other main things to look for are well, how big is your portfolio? How many names are you trading? In general, the more you're trading, the better. And there are several reasons for that. One is uh, if you submit us a factor that is very large and we have more um, possibility of using it in different ways, right? So if we decide like, oh, actually this factor works really well if we only like take the top and bottom 10th ten, percentile, for example, uh, we probably wouldn't do that. But nonetheless, now we have uh, yeah, more optionality. So uh, we might not trade all the names, but it's good to have them in there just because uh, it allows us to do more things with your factor. And moreover, another reason is just uh, as a very natural protection against overfitting. So a factor that uh, will work on, say, 20 names in an extreme case, that is much easier to get to look good than something that works on 1,000 names like here. So those are some good reasons of why to uh, target uh, a big one. Um, of course, uh, it doesn't have to be always the whole universe if you have reason to assume that it will only work for a specific um, only work for specific um, factors. Okay, and then we also have the turnover um, in red, and that obviously relates to how fast the factor moves, and also then how, um, what kind of, um, what kind of um, trading costs will be incurred. So we used to do all kinds of like modeling for this, but really. Here it's um, more about uh, the, the turnover, which is much easier to measure, and then that might translate to a totally different uh, turnover in our book. But he, generally, you want this to be low and this to be high. And then this last plot here, um, which has improved tremendously. So we used to have a big problem where the optimizer, if it's used incorrectly, would just squash everything to be equal weighted. So all the weights would be the same. So there would only be like long and short sides, but no variability in that. And if you have a factor, you want some sensitivity in it. You want that 
high values of your factor or high scores in your factor represent that you have high confidence that this stock will go up and vice versa. So we want that to be represented in the um, in these um, in the weights, right? So the confidence should be represented in the weights, and this is one way to look at that, where we have a uh, just quantiles of your weight distribution over time. So this says the 95th, uh, the 5th percentile of your holdings, so the short side um, is on average over here, and then the 25th percentile is over here. So if this was equal weighted, which it's not, then these two lines would essentially be overlapping. So this is what I'm looking for here, and this looks picture perfect, where we have a nice separation, and this looks almost like a normal distribution, essentially the weights. So um, a lot of weights would be very small, very uh, close to zero, and that is totally fine um, for weights where you don't have a lot of space. So what is um, so that is one way also to like get to a high number of holdings, right? So a lot of them might be very small because you don't have much to say about those stocks, but you still provide a prediction. And then in the aggregate with other ones, or maybe just for hedging, it's useful for us to include even small weights. Like if we if we had to like sort of trade into one name, then um, just for example, to hedge out the book, right? Um, then we would rather move it into a rather pick a stock for which we have a weak prediction than no prediction. Anyway, so that is just some uh, background on how we read these factors and how the logic is behind why we care about these things. I hope that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions. So let's review some of these. Um, so I guess I already started with Joachim's one and uh, this one is the one that I like best from all the submissions. Uh, it has a really high Sharpe ratio that they, that is steady over many days. Um, the, the returns distribution looks fine. There's some drawdowns, but that is always the case. Uh, so no big deal. And again, the, the turnover is in a nice range. It's not zero, zero actually, like some turnover um, I actually like um, as long as it's not too high. It's a very large book. and a very nice spread out distribution. So um, I'm just going to go through this and just uh, pick out a few that I think are interesting to look at. And this is actually kind of interesting because it really demonstrates uh, the type of pattern that you, would be easy to miss if you only looked at the backtest performance, right? So maybe you take the strategy and you just look at the backtest analysis screen and it will tell you, oh, it has a sharp ratio of 0.75. And that is solid, so uh, maybe you're happy with that. But if you run this in a book and you start incurring a delay of how you trade this off up to 10 days, this will turn against you, right? So that's why it's important to know this. Um, here you can also see that there's actually uh, quite a problem here in the weight distribution where there seems to be a consistent uh, negative tilt. So I don't know what is behind that, but um, I think there's some some problem maybe with the code. So I would invite the author to um, uh, to just take a look at this and, and revise. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the turnover is in a nice range and uh, pretty well controlled. And the number of holdings is large too. Um, ah, this is probably the factor that I should have uh, used from Joachim. So this is an updated version. So I always appreciate if people post updated versions and then also uh, label them. So this is essentially the same, but it's actually even stronger over time. So uh, that's a great improvement. And the turnover also seems lower. Um, and everything else is just as good as before. Um, so that is perfect. And uh, Joachim is definitely one of the winners already. So we can announce that. Um, cool win. Um, that one looks fine. Um, that one also seems to have some problem here with the weight, with the um, yeah, but this is like way too low, um, and uh, then like it's all, it's like barely equal weighted on the uh, long side. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, something is, is some some bias here. So it doesn't seem to be a symmetric distribution of the weights, um, probably because the factor is not symmetric. Uh, you could try and rescale this to be normal distribution, um, or maybe that's the only way it's 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 working. But anyway, that is um, um, that's uh, looks problematic. Um, in general, I liked Alex's um, submissions. They all look pretty strong. Um, draw down here. 
um, Balasridar. Um, so he also submitted some great stuff. Uh, again, this looks pretty nice, steady shop ratio of um, almost two over time. And fine weight distribution, some nice sensitivity there, turnovers in a healthy range and uh, a large number of holdings. And uh, Balar is also a winner. So congratulations, Balar. And also I think um, Balar is the first one to uh, submit. So um, he knocked it all apart directly on the first submission, which I like. Uh, Kyle has uh, done many updates. And again, I appreciate that. It's always nice to sort of see a progression of like, oh, this is where I started. And then progressively seeing it improve. And uh, so yeah, he also notes that there's a skewed naturally favoring long positions. So um, that is what we can see here. And but yeah, so we will see the many, many more of those. Um, yeah, Bjark. Um, so it makes my life super much easier if you just, when you share it, you can, it'll show you the notebook and then you can click on the cell that you want to share. Um, so you could just click on this and then get it. Um, so yeah, this is also a great one. Um, it didn't quite make the cut. One of the problems is, as you can see here, this ends up being equal weighted. Um, which, which, as I discussed before, is not um, it's not ideal. You know, yeah. So there's a bunch from Kyle, so um, we can just see him iterate and uh, improve things. There's still the the bias. Couple uh, on. That's a good one. Yep. So yeah, and Balar is also improving. So this is uh, the final version, I think. Um, and it looks great. One thing is that the holdings are sort of capped, it seems, um, which is probably fine, but um, the, but yeah, there might be a better criterion that you could uh, apply in terms of um, how you want to screen your universe rather than just uh, for example. Uh, ah, actually, there's one more, okay. Um, yeah, so here he did that. So that's a nice update uh, between the two versions. Um, but yeah, overall, this looks really good. Um, more improvements from Kyle. Um, and this is basically like very, like the very classic pattern where it just like starts to decay and it shows that it does have some turnover. So it's changing, but at the same time, um, yeah, so, so it is decaying, but it's um, very slowly decaying. Uh, Indigo Monkey. Um, well, actually, so what I'm going to do is because um, we don't need to go through all of them because there are many. Um, it's a good problem to have, but uh, I'm just going to start at the bottom, and that way it'll be the latest ones um, from the winners. So this is the latest version of uh, yeah, that one is grooming. Yeah, Kesenada, um great job as well. Didn't quite make the cut, but um, this this looks great. So the weight distribution here is um, looks great. The universe isn't the biggest, and the turnover is, is a bit high for the sharp ratio, but nonetheless, um, that's a great um, entry. And I think it's also the first time that uh, you submitted, so welcome. Um, yeah, in general, like Alexa's stuff was really cool, um, although didn't quite make the cut. Um, Taro, um, good stuff. Yeah, so Kyle M, um, they submitted two, I think. Um, and I'm just going to pick one of them because they do look like they are a bit correlated um, just due to the drawdown. Uh, but they both look great. I think they probably do have like different approaches. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I decided to just pick one of them as the winner. So, um, so yeah, this one is like, looks really, really strong, right? It starts out with a sharp edge of four. Then while it does decay rather quickly, it still like has a lot of juice left even after a couple of days. Um, and the distribution looks picture perfect. Um, the, that bias is gone from before. Large number of holdings and turnover in the low five to 10% range. So um, yeah, that's, that's an amazing one. Uh, congratulations, Kyle. 
Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that one's also great. Um, and let's just do and for more. Uh, yeah, Shogo, this one is also interesting, but there seems to be like a phase shift here where all of a sudden the number of holdings increase. And you can see also here in the weight distribution where something just seems to happen. So that would suggest to me that there's some instability in, in the factor or the code uh, that causes this. And I would invite you to look closer into what, what was going on here. Um, and maybe you, maybe you can resubmit it. Okay, so then um, I think we look at a couple. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight the winners um, looking here. Okay, so Oleg is a winner. Um, and I think I did I announce that one. I think I did, yeah. So that one, um, yeah, Oleg, congratulations. And we have Wen. Which I also mentioned. Yeah. So this one also um, just looks looks really good. Um, turnover is higher, but um, sometimes that's that's what you want. Um, then Kalem, uh, I already reviewed that. Joachim also uh, reviewed, and then Indigo Monkey. Yeah, that one just looks also just really strong with, um, yeah, sharp range over three for um, at least the first 10 days. So that's really amazing. Uh, turnover is a bit on the higher side, but um, again, sometimes it's th those work better for certain time periods. So you do want some variability in your portfolio between factors that move fast and those that move slower. Or you want to build bit different portfolios, different speeds. Nice large holding. So yeah, congratulations, uh, Indigo Monkey. That's a really amazing contribution. And then uh, we also have, so those are the five winners. And then we also have the newcomer prize uh, for someone who has not submitted before. And that is um, Bala Shridhar. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, yeah, because it's, um, as I mentioned before, like it's also a really good uh, submission uh, with everything that we're looking for. So, yeah, uh, congratulations to everyone. We will be in touch uh, regarding the, the prize money. So, as I said, everyone uh, earns a $100 cash prize. Um, as I also wrote in the description, this was one reason for us was to evaluate whether we want to like start investing in Japanese equities, uh, but also, so that is like more in the future. So, currently, we're not going to license any of these. Um, as I wrote in the description. So this was, of all the challenges so far, this one was for us the most experimental one. Uh, again, as I wrote in the text. And uh, so this is only the, the cash price here. But uh, yeah, so we were really excited to learn that everyone was able to just really think in a totally different way for a totally different market. So it really shows the, uh, the, the breadth of a talent in the community and how adaptive and flexible everyone is in terms of yeah taking on new challenges and we definitely will keep keep doing this uh, and mix it up with like more traditional ones as the first two but also some more experimental ones like this one um okay so um i'm not sure if there are any questions um so if if there are then let me know otherwise um of course thank you uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, so right now we're going to move to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, at the moment, we only have one question, but I'll give you guys a couple more minutes to ask any questions that you have. And then, um, yeah. So the first question is, any idea when the financial cha challenge results will come out? Ah, thank you for that question. Um, that is something that I wanted to mention. We, uh, I do plan to have that uh, live webinar to announce the winners on December 23rd, so next Monday. Um, we will announce that soon, so stay tuned for that. So in the challenge, we had um, eight people that submitted to the challenges for the first time. Um, we kind of like wanted to acknowledge um, their submission and their hard work. Um, and so those eight people were, um, and 
sorry if I am mispronouncing, but Kai, uh, Shogo, Oleg, uh, Bala, uh, Ryo, uh, Bjark, Tar uh, Taro, and Srini Rasan. So thank you guys for um, working on the challenge and uh, submitting for the first time. And uh, we hope to see more of the first time submitters um, next time around. Um, there is another question. Um, do you have some out of sample results? Uh, we do not. So again, uh, because of the limitations of foreign markets, so for yes equities, what we can do is uh, if there's a back test that you uh, that you just submitted, then we can take that back test object, run it on our own in our own infrastructure on whatever time range we choose. But because this is a factor that only lives in the notebook, we can't, and, and the factor was deleted when you submitted the notebook, so we actually have no way of running this on a different time period. So that's why the only thing I could go on for this challenge was just these um, plots over that time range. So yeah, there is no out of sample results here, but um, which is a limitation. But yeah, for other ones, uh, there will be, and we do plan to incorporate uh, some of the out of sample performance in the score and picking the winner, but um, stay tuned for that. Uh, there's another question. Um, in terms of industry, how would you compare Japan market to the US market? Um, like we know for the last 10 years or so, the US market is mostly driven by tech. How about Japan? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't feel confident enough to answer that. Um, so. I, I would just refer to people who know more about the Japanese market than I do. Um, there was a comment about that um, just now saying, I think um, Japan is notable for long periods of no or negative returns. Um, there's also another comment um, saying, interesting how many of these algos have, some, have the same drawdown. Oh, that is a really interesting observation. Um, I have not noticed that, but it seems just from remembering this, so maybe around February 2017, is that what you mean? Yes. Oh, wow, that is really cool. I hadn't noticed that. So this one doesn't, um, but the first three, yep, this one too. So does anyone know what happened in that time period? Was there like something particular? Yes. That is quite interesting. Thanks for pointing that out. Who was that? Uh, that was Viridian Hawk. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, if anyone has any ideas, um, I mean, feel free to post them here or post them in the um, in the answer below, like what was happening in uh, February 2017 in the Japanese market, probably some, some bubble um, that had that impact. That's cool. At the moment, we don't have any other questions or comments. So um, I'm going to wait another minute. And then um, otherwise, we can wrap up the webinar. Cool. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. Th again, thanks for everyone who submitted, especially the newcomers. Um, and we hope to see you again on Monday for the live tertiary review of the financial status set. And also, we do work on, we do have the next challenge that we're working on already. and. Uh, we're very excited about that. I think that will be a really interesting one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Thomas, there's one more question. Um, having a turnout requirement, do you think this will make all al algos have to include technical analysis? Uh, a turnover? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So actually, that is a question, I think, more for the financials one, because there we had a minimum turnover requirement. Um, so I think I will just defer that there, but uh, well, I mean, just to touch on that, it is true that like if you want a factor that has reasonable high, has higher turnover, certainly things like fundamentals uh, are probably not gonna be um, the only thing that you would look for. So maybe there's some interactions with that that you can play with, um, but I mean, there's other data sets, right? Uh, data sources that move faster, so there's not just um, fundamentals and technical analysis. So anything that has uh, like sentiment, um, right, uh, that moves faster. So anything that is not fundamentals, I would say, uh, is, is fair game there. So I would just play around with more data sources.
Okay, great. So since there are no more questions, we're going to uh, wrap up the Q&A portion of the webinar. But if you, but if you have any remaining questions for Thomas, um, you can post them um, in the forum post um, that is in the comments uh, section below. Um, as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and will be reposted on our YouTube channel uh, within a few days. You can subscribe and press the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. Thank you all for watching, and thank you to Thomas for presenting a great webinar. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you all. Bye.